welcome back to another broadcast. My name is in Scotland. Very pleased to be here. Thanks for tuning in today. And uh, today we are in Jeremiah chapter 33. Um, this is another wonderful chapter of scripture. I do trust that you're staying in prayer. God is the God of all encouragement. He encourages the faint hearted. Um, Elohim Yahweh is merciful and gracious and loving and righteous. Um, Yahweh is over all, through all, and in you all. Uh, the Father of eternity, the King of glory, the head of every man, the judge of the whole earth, um, all families, all mortals, all nations, entirely subjected to one man, the Son of God. You know, friends, I'm conscious that persons only seem to listen to the first sort of, uh, many persons, the first sort of number of minutes of these broadcasts. So I would heartily encourage you to stay in the scriptures, stay in prayer, keep moving forwards. If you're struggling, keep struggling forwards. Um, try and find your niche, how you can help others on a daily basis. Uh, try and see where God wants you to serve him. Um, see who you can encourage every day. Find someone to assure, encourage, and inspire, even in a small way every day. Um, avoid the world, the flesh, and the devil. Um, walk in the truth. Stay under the blood. Stay in the scripture. Read the scriptures aloud. There's great power in reading the scriptures aloud, friends. Great power. Um, a relationship with Elohim Yahweh means that generally and severally you'll be clear of the bedevilments, things like lust. Greed, anger, envy, hatred, pride. Um, the power of the blood atonement means mortals uh, enjoy the and uh, participate in and uh, experience the divine nature. And they can uh, partake of the divine nature by eating the flesh and drinking the blood of the Son of God, the Lord Jesus the Christ. So redemption is a wonderful thing, friends. Christ, Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Blessings forever. One man, friends, who is made unto mankind salvation, righteousness, holiness, and redemption. So, friends, I do so hope you're staying in the scriptures on a daily basis um, and walking in the truth of the word of the living God. Jeremiah chapter 33. The Devar Yehovah came to Yehudimiah the second time while he was still shut up in the court of the prison. The word of the Lord came to Jeremiah the second time while he was still shut up in the court of the prison, saying, Thus saith Yahovah the Lord, the doer of it, Yahovah that formeth it to establish it, Yahovah is his name. Thus saith the Lord, the doer of it, the Lord that formeth it to establish it, the Lord is his name. Uh, call unto me, and I will answer thee, and I will show thee great and hidden things which you do not know. For thus says Yahovah, the Elohim Hayasharel, the Lord, the God of Israel, concerning the house of this city and concerning the houses of the kings of Judah, which are thrown down because of the mounds and because of the sword. They come to fight with the Chaldeans, but to fill them with the dead bodies of the men whom I have slain in my anger and in my fury. And for all those whose wickedness I have hidden my face from this city. Behold, I will apply a healing dressing to it and cure, and I will heal them and will to reveal to them an abundance of peace and truth. I will to again turn the captivity of Yahudah 
and the captivity of Yah Israel, I will to build them as at the beginning. And I will to cleanse them from all their iniquity, whereby they have sinned against me. And I will to pardon all their iniquities, whereby they have sinned against me, and whereby they have transgressed against me. And it shall be to me a name of joy, a praise, and a glory before all the nations of the earth, which shalt hear of all the good that I doeth unto them, and they shall fear and tremble for all the good and for all the prosperity that I procure to it. Thus saith Yahovah the Lord, in this place of which ye say, it is waste without man and without beast. In the cities of Yahudar and in the streets of Yerushalayim, that are desolate, without man and without inhabitant and without beast. There shall again be heard the voice of mirth and the voice of joy, the voice of the bridegroom and the voice of the bride, the voice of them that say, Give ye thanks unto the Lord of armies, Yahovah said that For Yahovah is good for his loving kindness endureth forever. Of those that bring thanksgiving to the house of Yahovah, for I will turn the captivity of the earth as in the beginning, saith the Lord, Yahovah. There shall again be heard the voice of mirth and the voice of joy, the voice of the bridegroom and the voice of the bride. The voice of them that say, Give ye thanks to Yahovah of armies, the Lord of hosts. The Lord Yahovah is good, for his loving kindness dureth forever. Of them that bring thanksgiving to the house of Yahovah, for I will turn the captivity of the earth as in the beginning, saith the Lord Yahovah. Thus saith Yahovah of armies, in this place which is waste without man and without beast, and in all the cities thereof, there shall again be a habitation of shepherds, causing their flocks to lie down. In the cities of the hill country, in the cities of the lowland, and in the cities of the south, and in the land of ben Yamin, and in the environs of Yerushalayim and in the cities of Yahudah shall the flocks pass again under the hands of him that counteth them, saith Yahovah. Behold, the days doth come, saith Yahovah. Behold, the days doth come, saith Yahovah, that I will to perform the good word which I have spake to the house of Yisrael and to the house of Yahudah. In those days at that time, will I cause a branch of righteousness to grow up to David? And he shall execute judgment and righteousness in the land. In those days and at that time, will I cause a branch of righteousness to grow up to David? And he shall execute judgment and righteousness in the earth. In those days shall Yahudah be saved and Yerushalayim shall dwell in safety. And this is the name wherewith she shall be called. Yahovah, our righteousness. Yahovah, our righteousness. For thus saith Yahovah, there shall never fail to David a man to sit upon the throne of the house of Yashirah.
For thus says the Lord, there shall never fail to David a man to sit upon the throne of the house of Israel. Neither shall there fail to the priests, the Levites, a man before me to offer up burnt offerings and to burn oblations and to do sacrifice continually. And the Devar HaYehovah came to Yeremiah. The word of the Lord came to Yeremiah, saying, Thus saith Yehovah, the Lord, If you can break my covenant in respect to the day, and my covenant in respect to the night, so that there should not be day and night in their season, then shall also my covenant be broken with David, my servant, that he should not have a son to reign upon his throne. And with the Levites, the priests, my ministers. As the host of the heavens cannot be numbered, nor the sand of the sea, me as you. So will I multiply the seed of David, my servant, and the Levites that minister to me. And the Devar Yehovah came to Jeremiah, saying, The word of the Lord came to Jeremiah, saying, have you not seen what this people have spoken? Saying the two families that Yahovah the Lord has chosen, he has even cast them off. And they despise my people, that there should be no more a nation before them. Thus saith Yahovah, if my covenant of day and night stand not, if I have not appointed the ordinances of the heavens and the earth, then will I also cast away the seed of Yahweh and of David my servant, so as not to take of his seed to be rulers of the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. For I will turn their captivity and will have mercy upon them. Glorious chapter indeed, friends. Certainly millennial in character, specific historical application at that time, uh, application to the Jews, the Israelites, natural, and application to individual believers in Yeshua HaMashiach, the servants of Jesus. Now, this is Yeremiah 3 3. So there are various speeches in here that are particularly precious. Uh, once again, you have the three persons of the Godhead in the first three verses, as is very often the case with prophetic scripture. So, Jeremiah 33 1. The word of the Lord came to Jeremiah the second time. So this is the uh, the voice of God the Father coming to the Son of God the second time. Uh, this would speak of Christ in resurrection. But the character of the verse is that Jeremiah was still shut up in the court of the prison. So this would speak of all God's purposes and Jesus yet to be fulfilled. And I would say the speak of Christ in death, pre-resurrection, the Word of the Lord coming to Jeremiah the second time whilst he was shut up in the court of the prison. I would say, just speak to some degree of Christ, the power of God the Father raising up the Son of God, the Son of God raised himself up, and the Holy Spirit raised up the Son of God. And, uh, this definitely would speak of God uh, raising Christ out of death. Uh, that's what, that's what that is. You, you could say carefully, I suppose, the, the word of the Lord coming to the Son of God was God speaking to the first man in the garden. Uh, you could say that the word of the Lord coming to the second time would be Christ in resurrection, the voice of God the Father raising up the Son. Um, 
it's a great thing to think of uh, God's purposes. And as I often say, the first man, Adam, the second man, Christ, the first man of the earth, earth, the second man, the Lord from heaven. We see King Saul and King David, a type of the first and the second man. We see uh, in what we call the New Testament, the soul of Tarsus, the first man, the apostle Paul, the second man. Um, and of course, Israel, uh, be Jacob becoming Israel is a type of the first man, the second man, of course. And Yeremiah is one of the greatest times of the Son of God. And indeed himself was a Son of God. Uh, um, and certainly the, the second time would, would speak of God's voice coming to mankind by way of redemption and salvation, which is indeed the theme of the beginning of this chapter. It's the voice of God through the blood of Jesus, through the power of the spirit of Jesus Christ, uh, by way of redemptive atonement, the completed work of salvation. <clears throat> and the theme of Jeremiah still being shut up in the court of the prison, that definitely does speak of mankind still being under bondage to some degree to the world of flesh, the devil, um, God's purposes, having been completely fulfilled in the Son of God from the eternal perspective, but as regards time, men and women in time upon the earth are still subject to the curse. Uh, the world, the flesh, and the devil, the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. So in that respect, as regards the practical application towards all mankind of God's eternal purposes and his glorious son, um, all things are not yet fulfilled. So from that perspective, you could carefully say uh, the purposes of God are still yet to be fully fulfilled in the son as regards time upon earth and that's what's inferred then um, there's also a sense of Christ it's an interesting point the, the, the power of Elohim Yahuwah cannot be limited by mortals and yet Elohim Yahuwah chooses to uh, restrict his power upon and with mortals due to their rejection or acceptance of the son of God the Lord Jesus the Christ. We saw that Christ is often written in the Gospels, couldn't perform miracles there because of their unbelief. Uh, and so humans suffered because of their rejection of the Son of God. And thus it is right at this very moment, friends, somewhere around this world, humans are suffering because of humans rejecting the Son of God. That's the truth. This whole planet is entirely subject to the feelings and sensibilities of righteousness and justice and holiness and redemptive power of the Son of God. The feelings of Jesus at this very moment are expressed on this earth. Mortals endure the wrath of the Lamb and the wrath of God with every passing moment. All mourning by mortals is connected with the sufferings of Jesus. All flesh, all families, all nations are entirely subject. This is Christianity, and this is the kingdom of God Almighty. Now, it really is a glorious chapter, friends, uh, particularly the first three verses. One could talk all day long on these verses. I shall read them. Uh, and the word of Jehovah came to Jeremiah the second time while he was still shut up in the court of the prison, saying, Thus saith Jehovah, the doer of it. Jehovah that formeth it to establish it, 
Jehovah is his name. Call unto me and I will answer thee. I will show unto thee great and hidden things which you know us not. Now, <clears throat> um, of course, the first time was the previous chapter, friends, and I do so hope that my hearkeners have listened to the broadcast. I believe this. Oh, no, it was all in one broadcast, Jeremiah 32. Uh, this is where Jeremiah's cousin comes to uh, Jeremiah while he's in prison and, and says to buy the field from him. Because Jeremiah had the right of redemption, saw the type of the purchasing by, by the blood and suffering of Jesus of all mankind by way of atonement, substitutionary atoning death and glorious physical resurrection. Um, and so that was the when the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah while he was shut up in the King Zedekiah's prison in Jerusalem because Jeremiah had spake that the besieging invading forces were about to overrun Jerusalem and that the king himself, Zedekiah, would be taken into captivity into Babylon. So the king Zedekiah had ordered Jeremiah to be put into prison. And so his cousin comes to him and he buys this field. It's a type of redemption. It's a great... It's a great, really larger descriptive of some of the parables in what we call the New Testament, such as the Lord Jesus Christ buying the treasure in the field. And in order to do so, he had to buy the whole field. Um, that's absolutely lost in view. And also we read, uh, I think it's Matthew 14, the parable of the good seed and the bad seed. The son of man, the son of God, sowing the good seed and the devil sowing the bad seed. Um, in the field, you see. So this is the basis for those parables right here in Jeremiah 32. Um, yeah. Then you have this beautiful uh, verses here. Alas, Adonai, you are, you've made the skies and the earth by your great power and stretched out arm. There's nothing too hard for thee. You show mercy to thousands and you recompense the iniquity of the fathers into the bosom of their children. Thou the great mighty God, Yahuwah Sebaot is his name. Great in counsel and mighty in work, whose eyes are open upon all the ways of the children of men to give everyone according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. Behold, I am Jehovah, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too difficult for me? Then, of course, in today's portion of scripture, the word of the Lord comes the second time. So the first time is the capacity and the actual purchase of redemption. Um, and we shall read on and see what the, uh, the word of the Lord has for us by way of the second time. <clears throat> to Jeremiah, who is the time of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, in verse 2, so verse 1 is very much the actions and will of God the Father. Verse 2 is the actions and will of the Son of God. Um, 2 being the number of the Son of God, of course. Thus saith Yahovah, the doer of it. So this speaks of Christ being the actual doer of the will of God. It's virtually a unique title. I don't think you get that anywhere else in scripture. We will have a quick look, friends, but I'm, I don't think you do. Yes, it's just here in the whole Bible. You only get this descriptive of Jehovah here in the entire Bible. Thus says Jehovah, the doer of it. It's a great thing to think of Jehovah's doer. That God always accomplishes his purposes. God always fulfilleth his work. God always keepeth his promises, friends. Of course, the doomed, deluded devils are waiting to be chained and cast into the pitch darkness of the bottomless abyss for a thousand earth years. And then to be released for a very short time and then to be cast alive into the lake of sulfurious brimstone, 
eternal punishment. Yahavar Elohim always keeps his word. It's a great thing to think of uh, God looking over his word to perform it, of the word of the Lord being like a hammer that smashes the rocks into pieces, the word of the Lord being the light in every human being at the present moment. The word of the Lord sustaining all creation, the oxygen, the birds of the air, the fish in the ocean, the creatures upon and beneath the earth, all things at the present moment are the word of the Lord, friends. The word of the Lord is forever settled in the skies. There's no counsel against the word of the Lord, friends. The word of the Lord is over everything. There is no understanding, counsel, or purpose against Yahweh Elohim, friends. You see, men and devils, right, at this very moment, of Elohim Yahweh. Elohim Yahweh rules the whole universe, right? Mortals are creature possession. The Son of God, the Lord Jesus the Christ, has power to subjugate all flesh, all nations, all mortals to himself. This is Christianity, friends. This is the word of the Lord. God only fulfills his promises. Jehovah, the doer of it, the creator, the redeemer, the Lord, the king, the sovereign of the whole universe. This earth only hath one sovereign. This earth only hath one king. Now, Jehovah, the doer of it, friends, a unique descriptive term in the whole Bible. Jeremiah 33, 2. Jehovah that forms it to establish it. Jehovah is his name, of course. What's in view there in verse 2 is all the work of God in Christ, in redemption, in salvation, in deliverance, in peace and grace and truth. In loving kindness. Original purpose is the whole councils of Elohim. And then Jeremiah 3 3 3. Call unto me, and I will answer thee. I will show thee great and hidden things which you do not know. It's a wonderful memory verse, friends. In Jeremiah 33 3. Call unto me, and I will answer thee. And I will show thee great and hidden things which you do not know. A very good memory verse, friends, very simple to remember. Thus says Yahweh, the Elohim Hayashirel. So this is the promise of mercy. And blessing and deliverance in the first instance to, to Israel and of course that is what happened after the Babylonian invasion and besiegement of the cities of Israel, defeat of the Israelites, the taking away captive of King Zedekiah and his princes and his nobles the joiners and the metal workers, the engineers if you like well, you, I don't suppose in those are equal engineers but certainly metal workers the woodworkers and the metal workers, along with the nobles, were all taken into captivity into Babylon. Um, but of course, Israel was restored in the Willow Hill Israel was restored after that uh, for a period of time, for the, what was it, for the 500 years until the Romans besieged Jerusalem and the Jews fled Israel and Israel ceased to be a sovereign nation. Uh, for 1870 years. Now, that was in AD 70, 25 years or so after the physical resurrection, the physical ascension of the Son of God. Now, so, so this is the promise of the restoration of the land of Israel promise of the restoration of the Yahudim at that time, 
Uh, it's also <clears throat> the promise of the restoration of the Jews, which we've seen these last 74 years since 1948, when the Lord Jesus Christ, through his wife, through his bride, through the Christianized nations, through the impact of the work of the Holy Spirit, uh, through the saints, through the years in those nations, forming the United Nations, the tender mercies of Elohim Yawar, through his son, to his son's wife, uh, and the regathering and the renationalization of the Jews in the land of Israel in 1948 and their preservation to this very day by their king, the one that died to redeem them. Every human being will bow and serve the man who died for them. The eternal triune bridegroom who died upon the altar to purchase a bride who was already under the sentence of death, that he could have a living way by way of resurrection. Never before in the history of this planet was a bridegroom died to know and to actually have living way his wife who was already under the sentence of death. This is Christianity, friends. One man one woman, the lamb's wife. You see, the, the first woman came out of the side of the first man, you see, and the second woman came out of the spear pierced side of the second man, the Lord Jesus the Christ, while he lay in death in the tomb. It's the mystery of it, friends. And the triune eternal redeemer gave the message to Miriam of Magdala, right to bring the demons and be cast. Go tell my brothers and sisters. That's the reconciliation, the restoration, the redemption. All the purposes of Elohim, Yahweh, in the Son, Yeshua HaMashiach. Go tell my brothers and sisters, I ascend to my Father, and to your Father, to my God, to your God. The Christ God having obtained eternal redemption, peace and goodwill to all men. Wonderful. Now, <clears throat> and so you have the promise here of uh, uh, the restoration of mankind, the restoration of the Jews in the land, which, as I say, in the first instance was a short period of time after this prophecy was given, which was two and a half thousand years ago. Uh, but it doth also speak of the restoration and redemption of mankind, the establishment of mankind, the Son of God. And it doth also speak of the establishment of the Jews, the Israelites, these last 74 years, and the thousand year imminent millennial kingdom. Friends, that's what it doth speak of. <clears throat> um, verses four and five are descriptive of the conditions of men under the curse. Uh, and the houses of this city, the houses of the kings of Judah, is actually descriptive of the human body, uh, the, the person, the human body, the bodies of this city, the bodies of the kings of Judah, which were thrown down. It speaks of natural death. You see, it speaks of mankind put out of God's immediate presence because of the mounds and because of the sword. That speaks of the uh, wickedness of the devil and the effects of the works of the devils, which the Son of God has completely destroyed. The Son of God is manifested to undo and destroy all the works of the doomed, deluded, defiles. Now, they come to fight with the Chaldeans. So this next verse, first five, is really interesting. <clears throat> but to build one of the dead bodies of the men who are slain in my anger and my fury, and for all whose wickedness I've hidden my face from this city. Well, it speaks of humans and devils uh, conflicting, it speaks of the will of God. The will of men and the will of the devil conflicting together. 
<clears throat> it speaks of the curse and enmity, which is when men and women dislike each other. <clears throat> because men and women are spiritually sensitive <clears throat> to the reality that other human beings are bedeviled and deluded. Most humans are often wrong and emotionally challenged. And most humans are not particularly keen on lots of other humans because they know that they too are similarly challenged. And this has to do with whether human beings are in right relationship with Elohim Yahovah. And if they are, when a man's ways please Yahovah Elohim, he maketh even his enemies to be at peace with him. Submit to God. This is the devil, you will see. Yeah. Ah, entirely sovereign over all flesh, as we are not. Now, and so because of the wickedness of devils and the wickedness of men, it says here that Elohim Yahweh hid his face from this city. The city in view is Jerusalem. Jerusalem is a type of the woman, uh, the lamb's wife, the bride, the first woman, the type of all mankind. You see, Jerusalem is the most important city on the planet, and Israel is the most important country on the planet. The well being of the Son of God and the well being of Israel is the well being of all mankind. Because imminently, the whole planet will be completely ruled over from Jerusalem, Israel, for a thousand earth years, imminently. And the Son of God, the Lord Jesus Christ, will rule every human being, every family, and every nation from Jerusalem, Israel, imminently. So verses four and five are rather a complex descriptive of God's heart and mind towards mankind, the establishment of mankind upon earth, the conditions of the curse, the effects of the curse, the wrath and fury of God accomplished upon the earth, and uh, quite simply because of the wickedness of mortals. Um, men turned from Elohim Yahweh. So Elohim Yahweh turned from men, and men with them suffered under their own delusions and wickednesses. So Elohim Yahweh in verse 6, 6 being the number of man, behold, I will apply a healing dressing to it and cure, and I will heal them, and will reveal unto them an abundance of shalom, river, and amen. Behold, I will apply a healing dressing to it and cure, and I will heal them, and will reveal to them an abundance of peace and truth. Now, well, the healing dressing really um, is the finished work of Christ. It's, it's actually the risen, the risen Christ. Uh, it's a great thing to think of. Elohim Yahweh, the doer of it, the creator, the establisher, the redeemer, the revealer, giving healing and a cure, uh, and revealing an abundance of peace and truth. The beauty of scripture, friends. It's not just a, a healing dressing, it's a healing dressing and a cure. And the promise of healing, of course, the Son of God uh, is the tree of life that, uh, whose leaves are for the healing of the nations. An abundance of shalom is the Hebrew word there, which is well-being. It's more than peace. Well-being, shalom. One of the titles of Yahovah is Yahovah Shalom. And um, of course, it all has in you the finished work of Christ, a healing dressing, a cure, 
and an abundance of peace and truth, the turning of the captivity of the Akhidah and the captivity of Yashirel. So that's Yashirel, Israel is the Lord Jesus Christ, and Yahudah would be the Lamb's wife, the redeemed, the praise and the triumph and the joy, the crown of glory in the hand of God. Of course, that's verse 7, 7 being the word perfection, entirety, and completion. And that also has in view the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, the turning of the captivity of Yahudah and the captivity of Yashon. And of course, at the time of the the, uh, the ministry, the miracles, the walking on water, the giving of limbs to the limbless, sight to the blind, hearing to the deaf, the glorious uh, gospel, the evangelist so of love, light, and truth, the crucifixion, the burial, the physical resurrection of the Son of God. Israel was already under occupation from the Romans. Uh, the physical resurrection of God's Son was the actual turning of the captivity of Judah, Israel, the promise to establish and build them as at the beginning, well, that began in 1948 after the uh, punitive atrocities of World War II by the Germans. And now mercy and grace has been extended. Elohim Yahweh has sent forth his light and his truth to save, heal, and deliver. I'll build them again as at the beginning. Of course, what's principally in view was the restoration of the Israelites, uh, the sovereignty of their land after this uh, Babylonian invasion and captivity. The promise of cleansing. So it's a wonderful chapter. Really, it all has in view the finished work of Christ, healing, cleansing the blood of Jesus, restoration, Redemption and reconciliation, uh, establishment upon earth and time. It's really a beauteous picture of Christianity that mortals on earth in time have peace and truth and establishment. I will cleanse them from all their iniquity whereby they have sinned against me. I will pardon all their iniquities, whereby they have sinned against me, and whereby they have transgressed against me. So that's the Lamb of God who took away the sin of the whole world. Um, it all has in view here, Yerushalayim, which is the Lamb's wife. It shall be to me a name of joy, of praise, and of glory before all the nations of the earth, which shall hear of all the good that I do to them. And they shall fear and tremble for all the good, for all the prosperity that I procure to it. It's a great verse, friends. A name of joy, of praise, and of glory before all the nations of the earth, which shall hear of all the good that I do to them. They shall fear and tremble for all the good and for all the prosperity that I procure to it. Thus says the Lord Yahweh in this place of which you say it is waste, without man and without beast, in the cities of Yahudah and in the streets of Jerusalem that are desolate, without man and without inhabitant and without beast. So in the first instance, it's the city of Jerusalem after the terrible, brutal besieging of Jerusalem at that time, uh, in 550 BC, two and a half thousand years ago. Uh, but it's also a picture of mankind under the curse, bedeviled and deluded. Thus says the Lord in this place that you say is a waste, there will be again heard the voice of mirth and the voice of joy. The voice of the bridegroom and the voice of the bride. So that is Christ and the congregation. The eternal triune redeemed bridegroom and his wife.
the voice of the bridegroom, friends, the voice of the bride. A great thing to think of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords speaking very clearly, friends, to think of clarity and serenity and sovereignty and all the power of El Olam, all the power of El Shaddai, all the power of Yahovah looking. One man, a man that is fully gone and fully man. Elohim Yahweh, the triune redeemer. Great things think of the whole planet under the sovereign dominical authority of one risen man out of death. It's a great thing, friends, to contemplate the authority of Jesus Christ uh, and the authority of his wife over all nations, all mortals. Men will say, give thanks to the Lord of armies, give thanks to Yahweh, for Yahweh is good, for his loving kindness endureth forever. Of those that bring thanksgiving to the house of Yahweh, for I will turn the captivity of the earth as in the beginning, says Yahweh. Of course, this is Jeremiah 3, 3, 1, 1. It's a phenomenal verse, friends. Once again, the theme of one man, one woman, uh, the bridegroom and the bride. The holy institution of marriage. Marriage. The sovereignty of Elohim, the authority of the ancient of days, setting everything in order in every place, friends. I will turn the captivity of the earth as in the beginning. It's a great thing, friends. The captivity of the planet turned as in the beginning. There'll be a habitation of shepherds causing their flocks to lie down. That speaks of the Son of God, who is currently every man, woman, and child on this planet. Everyone living and moving and having their being. In Elohim Yahweh. A habitation of shepherds, that is Christ Jesus, friends. Christ Jesus is every man, woman, and child on this planet. Christ Jesus is the, could we say, the, the vessel, the container of all mankind. So it's difficult to explain, friends, but the Son of God is currently everything, everyone, everywhere. Every man. Christ is every man. I remember at college back in the 90s, we had a course called Every Man. It's a very good course, actually. Very, very, very good. There was questions, and we had to find all the scriptures for the questions. And the, the course was called Every Man. And it was a very intensive course, as I remember. We probably spent, all told, Certainly over 30 hours completing it, and anyway, so maybe more. Uh, yeah, so Christ is every man. That's the mystery of it, friends. Now, the feelings of the Son of God are expressed throughout this planet right now. This planet is already subject to the Son of God. Now, the habitation of shepherds, that's Christ Jesus, see? Causing their flocks to lie down, that's Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in the green pastures. He restoreth my soul. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of Yahovah forever. Mm -hmm. 
in the cities of the hill country, in the cities of the lowland, and in the cities of the south, the land of Benjamin, which is the son of Jehovah's right hand, Benjamin. Um, ben is son, Jah is Jehovah. I mean, as well, is at the end there, it means Christ is the yea and the amen. In, we say amen or amen in, in English. It's amen, 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 amen. Uh, it's so be it. So the son of Jehovah is the yea and the amen. The first and the last, the alpha and the omega. <clears throat> and that word there, the land of Benjamin, it's Hiretz Haben Yamin. It means the earth of the son of Jehovah. And in the environs of Jerusalem, that means the proximity of the lamb's wife. The lamb's wife. <clears throat> you can read about it in Proverbs 31. The lamb's wife has accomplished the national health service. The social service. The civil service. The fire service, the police service, the ambulance service, the coast guard service, the street sweepers, clean streets, the judiciary, the government, all these things are the work of the Lamb's wife. You can read about in Proverbs 31, doing justly and rightly in the earth, in the absence of her husband. These are all really the works of Elohim Yahuwah through his son, through his son's wife. See, friends, so the whole planet throughout time really has still been ruled over by God and his son and his son's wife. Now, the city of Judah shall the flocks pass again under the hands of him that counted them. That's the Lord Jesus says, Yahovah. Of course, that's Jeremiah 3, 3, 1, 3. The days come, say Yahovah, that I will to perform the good word which I speak to the house of Yashirel and to the house of Yahudah. The days come, saith Yahovah, that I will to perform the good word which I have spake to the house of Yashirel and to the house of Yahuda. Well, friends, we'll be back soon with part two. Please stay tuned. Um, stay in the scripture, in prayer, giving thanks for all things to him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above anything men could ask or even think. And we'll be back soon uh, with another broadcast. Shalom, shalom.